Welcome to this new Adon Spotlight. In this Adon Spotlight, we're going to look at the latest release of Simbrief. Simbrief has received a massive update uh, this week, and you can see that they spent, I would say, a lot of time on making it so much nicer than it was, right? It was already a great tool, right, to schedule the flights, etc. But uh, as you can see, there's now, I would say, a little bit more, I would say, it looks more modern, but also it would say a nice overview. Because from I would say one point of view, you can see directly the uh, latest flights which you scheduled, uh, the flight plans which you created in the last couple of days. You can see that they're not too much, to be honest. Uh, other priorities which I would say decrease the time to fly. Uh, the aircraft types, right? Those are the manual ones which are imported. In this case, for the Avera 175, but also you can create a new frame directly from here and also view the save frames. And you can see the Navigra uh, Navigraph subscription. If you've got one, then you can directly see it here and also make sure that you uh, change the uh, RAC cycle to the most recent one. Uh, if that for some reason is not happening, then you will see a red square here and you can push this button, right? Which will bring you to this one and then you can activate the one which is, I would say, the more accurate one. So that's cool, right? What are the other things which you can do? Well. Directly from here you can do many things, right? You can go to the support, you can open support cases, but you can also download the software. And the download the software brings you to the Simbrief downloader, which I looked at I say a while ago, which makes it easier to, I would say, download the plans which you scheduled using Simbrief and directly import them or place them in the correct locations on your hard drive. For example, if you use the PMDG uh, aircraft, they require you to put it in a specific folder, as well as the uh, ones from... Uh, several other vendors let's keep it that way then we've got the uh, featured uh, websites which contains some links to the websites uh, most of them are uh, virtual airliners right so if you are searching for a virtual airliner you can press this option and then it will bring you to uh, that specific site and you can have a look at it right pretty cool then of course the system status which will show you the system status so what's the system status and also in the uh, right corner, you can see the support aircraft and the accuracy. So you can see that, for example, the C700, it's fair, but for the A320, it's high, right? And then you can also see the popularity. So how many times is it being used uh, planning flights? Server load, don't need to explain it, right? How much users are using it? Uh, and then here are some nice statistics about the use statistic and the flight planning statistics. Really cool to see. So, how does it work? Well, as with the previous one, right, you start with planning the flight, and this is also where you see a massive change. So, from now on, you have the, I would say, uh, flight info on the left side, and then you directly can see the map on the uh, right side, right? So, let's schedule a flight. Uh, let's uh, schedule a flight from uh, Amsterdam Airport. Well, where are we going to? Well, let's go to uh, JFK. And then let's see what happens. In this case, we need to schedule or select a flight or an aircraft. Sorry. We select the A320. And then you can see directly it maps the flight right here. So this is the flight. This is the fl or flight plan, which it, uh, I would say, suggests. It will find the, let's say, ultimate airport, right? Uh, Kilo India Alpha Delta, which is over here, which is near Washington. Uh, it will allow you to change the climb profile as you are used to. It will allow you to calculate the cost index, uh, the descent profile, uh, the fuel factor, right? So the fuel factor, if you press the uh, question mark, you can see in some cases the simple plans were not 100% correct uh, when using, for example, flight simulator or auto simulators. In that case, you can, I would say, change the uh, percentage. So P of 5, it's mentioned here, right? If you change it to P of 5, it will adjust 5% extra fuel when, I would say, calculating it. And of course, we've got the other data. Uh, we've got the options to change uh, the OFP, right? The OFP layout. You can see there are tons of layouts. In most cases, I'm using the leader one. Uh, the RAC cycle, of course, which you want to use, uh, the kilograms, uh, the flight plan, uh, flight maps, and the taxi in uh, or taxi out in uh, between brackets minutes. And then, of course, the fuel maps and a lot of options which you can 
uh, perform. For example, you can switch on the runway uh, analysis, uh, the optional entries, right, which will uh, mark the departing air, uh, departing runway and the arrival runway. Uh, for passengers, will be set to auto, but of course, you can also change it, right? You can set it to auto, none or, fu or full. The same thing is for the freight, and the zero fuel weight will be automatically calculated. And of course, the uh, flights and the other options. So this is also new, right? So on the right side, although it might be a little bit hard to see, so let me see if I zoom in and you can see it more clear. So this is in brief, right? But you here you can also see that this from real world. So real world, uh, it looks like these are the real world aircraft or flight plans, sorry. So if you would select this one, uh, then you likely are using, I would say, more realistic flight. Uh, but um, I'd say it's pretty cool. Uh, but in brief, still, I would say, also has this option, right? Uh, if you want to see more, you can click on the view all, of course, and then select the uh, flight plan which you prefer. Uh, there are a few of them. There's real world. You've got bad sim, uh, of course, some more <laughs> uh, sim briefs. So there are a few vendors which are now, I'd say, uh, added. And it's now easy to see based on this nice label. Then, of course, you can also find the uh, SID and stars, right? Based on your flight, if you want to change it, you can do it here. And you can always, I would say, analyze the uh, flight. Coming to this section, this is the, uh, the estimated altitude as well as the oceanic tracks. Uh, if they're enabled, uh, you can find the uh, SID and the stars if you want. You can uh, analyze the route. And all the rest is, I would say, kind of the same as it was previously, right? So once you're happy, you click on a generate flight that will generate the flight for you. So it takes a few minutes. So it's loading the brief, and then it will show you this, right? So one of them is okay. There are now, now also nice warnings, right? So in this case, the flight exceeds the aircraft range. So if you select an aircraft which can't fly, uh, let's say from Amsterdam to, uh, in this case, uh, JFK, you will get a nice warning. I'm not sure if this warning was previously already part of the, uh, let's say, uh, of the product. I don't think so, but maybe I missed it. Uh, and then you can also see the flight plan summary, right? So you can see the initial altitude, uh, the cruise uh, profile, uh, the route distance, uh, the wind, uh, the wind component, the fuel deficit. Not sure what deficit stands for. Looks like this is, I would say, hey, how much fuel do we have got left? Well, <laughs> in this case, I would say we're screwed, right? We don't have enough fuel. Then you can see the, the load load sheet containing the passengers, the uh, the en route burn, block fuel, uh, the zero fuel weight, uh, and a lot of more information, as well as the route, the other information, uh, the A to C flight plan, right? If you want to see it, uh, but by default, those are hidden. And the briefing uh, preview. In some aircraft, you can load this uh, on, say, flight plan, right? Because this is actually what's in the, if you press view PDF, this is what's being shown, right? So, this is, I would say, really the cool stuff, including the maps uh, and a lot of nice stuff. So, the vertical profile, a lot of, a lot of information. Uh, other than that, you've got, of course, the uh, departure and the uh, arrival. Oh, departure and destination airport uh, or the arrival airport as they call it here and that will contain some uh, meter data as well as the TEF and then it contains uh, say some information about the NOTAMs which are applicable to the uh, airport in this case and so really cool to see that they've added this and you can see that there are a lot of NOTAMs uh, active as you can see other than that what can you do? Well, if you scroll to the bottom, you can of course download the flight plan, but that can also be done using the SimBrief downloader, which they are, I would say, mentioning here again. Uh, but in this case, uh, I don't want to do it. And you can, I would say, pre file on the network, right? If you're using VATSIM, IVAL, uh, Pilot Edge, or Foscon, you can uh, click this one and then you can say pre file to make sure that the flight is registered. Uh, on the top, you can do the same thing, right? There are a few options over here which you can use to uh, schedule the flight uh, or sorry, download the PDF, uh, schedule flight on a network or download the flight plans from here. So really cool to see that they've added this. So what's other than that? Well, they've got the edit flight, but that's nothing different than it was previously, right? Which allows you to edit an existing flight plan which you created. 
Uh, you can also share your flight and you can start a new flight from the top over here. Um, whether or not them, that's kind of okay. You can say figure out the note them, right? So for example, if you uh, type in, in this case, uh, EM, right, which is Amsterdam, uh, then it will show uh, the latest uh, information about the airport, uh, the one which you just also saw in the, I would say, flight plan, uh, also the transition altitude, uh, uh, transition, pre transition altitude and level, uh, the meter visibility, the ceiling, uh, and a lot of other cool things. Uh, then you can also, let's say, go to the significant uh, weather charts, right, which will allow you to say zoom in to specific ones and then you can press it and then it will show uh, the maps over here which will contain some more information. Uh, oceanic tracks, right, you can select uh, several options and then you can press search and then it will contain the uh, say oceanic routes or the Atlantic tracks as they call it and then some more information. So really cool that they have added this. Uh, on the bottom there's a quick I would say uh, flight planner right so you can simply uh, type in the stuff you can say I want to fly a jet or a propeller and then say search and then it will show you the uh, flight plan which you can take this again right is actually is the same but this is a way, kind of a quick uh, quick flight planner uh, what do we have other than that we get the upper winds uh, charts which we just skipped right so you can select it then it will show you uh, this nice map with the wind information as well as the infrared satellite so if i press this one it shows me this so really cool you can uh, refresh it but you can also say populate from the last flight and the populate from the last flight is a really cool option because that one allows you to import the last flight and then get all the information i would say pretty quick so here ends this video where we looked at the latest version of SimBrief. But before that, one option, right? That's the dark mode. You can also switch to the dark mode if you don't like the, I would say, uh, light mode. Uh, especially useful when you're working or when you're flying in the evening hours because then, it, say, your display does not lit up uh, that much. Uh, but again, here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you got questions or comments, then feel free to put them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos and posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.